My adventure began by stashing my Vespa in my friend Sadie's garage on the Olympic Peninsula. It was a little road trip to get there, and then it was to the trailhead to sort uh, gear and do a gear check. So one of our guides was the famous Willie Benegas, and he actually helped me repack my bag. Uh, he is a total expert. I actually got to ride with him to the trailhead. Uh, here we are heading through the Olympics. It's really beautiful. We're heading to that trailhead. It is going to be an hour plus wait once we're there. Did not expect that. Did not have that on my uh, Summit Mount Olympus bingo card, but here we are. And we just kind of waited in traffic. But while we were driving and while we were waiting, he told me all about his amazing experiences um, summiting mountains all over the planet. Um, he did Everest 13 times. And we made it into the park. I thought this Bigfoot uh, sign was really funny. And then we were off. And here I am. The first day it is an easy 10 miles. It's pretty flat. No big deal. It was over 85 degrees out. So here we are soaking hats and uh, putting nice cold water on our heads and just enjoying the beauty of the Ho Rainforest, quietest place in the United States. I did think that that was very uh, amazing. It's one of the few places in the U.S. and the most quiet place where you can actually not hear the hum of humanity, which is uh, pretty special. And here's one of the log crossings that we did. We ended up doing several of these along our trip. Um, here is a really, just a really beautiful vista here. Um, a lot of the things that we'll do in this video series, I, I did not actually get to film myself doing them just because a lot of them were kind of dangerous. So uh, here's our first camp. So this is my little camping area. This is where I get to sleep first night and it's dinner time so I started with uh, the highest calories and eventually made my way into lower calories as the week went on here's some boiling water for dinner that's what it looks like it's actually pretty pretty decent uh, filtering water for for the next day uh, we do have to filter water here and I found this little oasis which I was really happy to because I was all sticky and sweaty from 85 degree hiking. I got to do a little bit of skinny dipping, which was pretty. Day two begins with coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I'm gonna pack up the tent and all the gear. And then uh, Willie here had a bunch of deer come right up to him. I called him a Disney princess. And uh, here's one of the water crossings. I'm trying to find the outhouse. I don't want to go in a bag. That was a big goal of mine. Uh, these outhouses are, you know, can be a little hard to get to. They're a little bit of a ways from camp, but this one was closed, so I had to go to the guard station. Took a while to find it, but there it is. I found it. So a little bit of extra hiking, and then back to camp for oatmeal for breakfast, and then we hit the trail. It's a little bit uh, foggy today. This trail is a lot steeper. It's not as hot, which is really great. Uh, this trail is a little more technical, it's pretty crumbly, but it's also very beautiful. This trail gives us several thousand feet of elevation gain. It's about nine miles or so, so just a teeny bit shorter than yesterday, but a hell of a lot steeper. So, beautiful waterfalls. It's just absolutely stunning up here. We're definitely climbing, um, changing into a different environment here. Another one of our log jam crossings. And those crossings are very interesting because we're all carrying like, you know, 40, 45 pounds on our backs, which makes a little bit of a difference. So this is where the trail is closed to horses from here on out. Here's some scrambling that we had to do to go down and back up. Starting to see some snow caps. It's absolutely amazing. And more scrambling. <laughs> really loose uh, dirt here. But I can see some of the Olympic peaks that I uh, am familiar with, and uh, we stopped to do a little bit of berry picking here and there, which is really nice. Kind of a refreshing snacks, more snow caps. But we're definitely climbing an elevation here, so it's kind of a hard climb, but enjoying it. Just definitely a different environment. This is very cool. And uh, starting to get mentally prepared for for what we're facing. Can definitely, you know, never quite been into this environment before. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for part two of. 
part two of day two. All right, so there was a huge landslide and it washed out this entire bit of trail. So they put this like 100 foot suspension ladder here. So helmets on and then we had to go down it. And it actually reminded me of being a little kid just climbing all over stuff. It was actually pretty fun. Uh, we do have, of course, you know, 40, 45 pound packs on our back, which adds a little bit of complication. And to get onto it, you have to like grab a rope, walk across the landslide, and then like get to the top of the ladder from the remaining trail, which is a challenge. Uh, we did learn about hanging up food against bears. So every night <laughs> after dinner, we would have to hang up our food. And that was pretty entertaining. Uh, here is base camp so we made it so this is gonna be camp for the next two nights now up here we don't need to filter the water so we just drink it straight out from the glacier runoff and there's nowhere to soak so i have to just make do with my feet and a couple inches of water after all that hiking just a little disappointing but uh i had this to look forward to my next high calorie meal for dinner and then we fit our crampons to make sure that we were totally set for the next day uh, and now it's time to pack for the summit. So summit, we got crampons, we got glacier glasses, the one item they would not let us continue on without. We've got a wag bag, first aid kit, trekking poles, harness, fleece, down, spot, GPS for emergency responder, mountaineering boots, two bottles of water, a headlamp, electrolytes, two different uh, sets of gloves, wool hat buff helmet and of course ice pick time to trim my toenails make sure i'm all set for the summiting and time to go to bed our day begins at 2 a.m we get up we get fed we load up our gear headlamps on and we begin our hike through the dark uh, about 3 a.m we're on this ridge it's about a 500 foot drop down there uh, it's a narrow ridge that we're walking on. Can't really see it, but you can sense it. We actually have to scramble down these 500 feet uh, to the bottom. And uh, once we are down there, it's time to get ready to cross the glacier. Crampons on. These are my crampons. And that's the glacier. Our first view of it as the wee morning dawn <laughs> begins. You can barely see it. I'm really enjoying this. I've never hiked across a glacier before. Uh, I've got a uh, trekking pole, got my ice axe ready. Uh, I think I called it an ice pick in the last video. I meant ice axe. Um, and we begin to climb up it. So this part is really fun. The, the sun is rising. It's starting to look really pretty out here. Really enjoying this. Uh, it is a bit of a hike. It's a very big glacier and it's uh, starting to get steep. And then we begin to ascend up the snow. There's some glacier runoff waterfalls. At one point, I was super thirsty, but didn't want to try to pull my water bottles out. And I just went face first into one of those waterfalls and uh, drank my fill. And it was actually probably the most delicious water I've ever had. Uh, we begin to climb and uh, there's a lot of rocks. We got a boulder over. Uh, those are really fun and interesting. It's actually really steep. The grade went from about 20% to like 40% uh, pretty quickly here. Um, it is uh, definitely a climb. We stopped to rest on the rocks for a minute before we continue. The bouldering is super fun. I did train for this uh, in the rock wall gym, and I'm really, really glad that I did. Um, it's really interesting. Yeah, there's my ice axe. And uh, here we are starting to head up the wall of snow. And uh, I'm just having the time of my life here. Um, what I love most, I was never out of breath. I was never exhausted or felt like I couldn't do it. But look how steep that is. There's a crevasse there, too. So uh, we kind of weave our path in between those crevasses. You can see them all in the background there. Uh, they're kind of concerning <laughs> because they're really deep. And also what you're walking on can suddenly give way to a crevasse at any time. So that is concerning. Uh, we're looking at this rock that we've got to climb. We're like, okay, kind of evaluating things. Um, there's uh, my guide ahead of me. And he's leading the way. <laughs> and uh, he's kind of showing me the path that we're taking. I'm just caught up in the view. I'm like, yeah, no big deal. Uh, I trained for this kind of bouldering, and I'm good. 
part two of Summit Day. Here we are. I'm looking back to everything we just came through, which is really cool. We did our trekking poles and make that final push for the summit, which is way up there. All right. Uh, I did clip myself with my cramp on several times. It's just a way that my left ankle loads because I have an old injury there. And uh, I didn't hit the skin, though, so everything is fine. And uh, there we are looking up at our rock climbing that we have to do. This is rock climbing about 100 feet in two pitches. So there's our guide going up to set us up for the first pitch. And uh, the second pitch is really out of sight. Once you're up there, then you can see the remainder of the climb. But uh, there's definitely parts of the climb where you can't see your guide below you and you can't see your guide above you. You're very much on your own. Got to climb this 100-foot rock face to get up to the summit. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I have done rock climbing in the past, and I did train at the Rock Wall Gym uh, for this, and uh, I felt really well prepared. There's definitely parts of it where there are no hand or footholds, and you kind of have to you know, brace your legs against a V-crack or stick your hand into a crack to... Uh, you know kind of pull yourself up there so it was definitely challenging but you just have to keep moving forward that's the big thing is that you just can't stop you have to keep moving um it's a little precarious but i actually found this part to be super fun it was uh, really exciting for me to try and uh yeah so get up there and uh once i'm up there uh, they, they will start to prepare that second pitch. Here I am waiting, and uh, they're preparing me for that second pitch up there, getting the ropes free. There's Willie, and uh, there it is. I made it to the summit after that second pitch, and here is the view. We got a good 360 here. So I'm really enjoying that. Oh, there's Adam, my other guide, and uh, I get the summit to myself for a second. There's my summiteer medal. And a selfie, of course, enjoying that beautiful snow cap views. I'm really stoked. This was uh, definitely challenging, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I'm thrilled that I actually summited, and of course, I got to sign the, uh, the the guide book there. There's a little log book. Uh, sign that. Enjoy the view again, and then get some photos of me. Yeah, there I am. I'm like, cool. I made it. Yes, hooray. <laughs> this was a, a big challenge for me. I, you know, had a bunch of health issues and I trained for four years to overcome them. So for me, this is like the climax of that story. This is the victory. I made it through the, all of this and, uh, you know, I, I healed and I'm better and I'm able to do physical things like this. And I'm really, really happy with that. Enjoying the views again. Just absolutely stunning. So I can see where the forest line begins way down there, which is really cool. And more selfies and just enjoying my time up here uh, before the rest of the team gets up here. Um, I did meet a gentleman who summited right after us who had actually fallen last year on the trail and broke his leg. And uh, he summited today right behind me. Uh, which was really great for him. Uh, I did leave, I have two of these, so I left one behind for other people to use for a photo op. And now we have to go all the way down. Damn. Getting ready for the rappel. Oh, it's a long way down, but I am ready to repel. Oh yeah, there I am, 100 feet. All right, and now repelling. This is not me, this is someone else. Uh, I made a snowman while I was waiting for them to come down. And uh, we make it down to the bottom. I've got my ice axe ready, and it's time to get back to the descending. I liked this, this is really cool looking. So here we are, we're heading down the mountain. It's time to descend. So we have to go all the way back now. And uh, there's a crevasse. This, is, this one's really scary because look at the little walkway in between the two crevasses. And uh, this right here was my favorite part. This is the ice wall. We back over it and it's cramp on, cramp on ice axe. A nice thwack into that and you had to back all the way down. I'm the only one who got to do that. And I thought it was pretty awesome. That was the moment I had where I was like, oh my God, I'm actually mountaineering. Um, like that was my, my revelation <laughs> halfway down that wall. 
Uh, looking at the Blue Glacier, really enjoying this. Th that is um, watermelon algae, and there's actually little worms all over the place that eat the watermelon algae, which uh, I thought was a little odd, something I definitely didn't know. And here we are hiking across the glacier, heading back. Um, I'm loving the color of this water. I think it's really beautiful. And uh, a big fog bank was in, and we actually got lost. We got separated from the group. It was just me and Adam, and uh, we were lost in the fog. <laughs> so fortunately, I've done some of that survival stuff, and I also have a really good sense of direction out here. I knew exactly where we were supposed to go, and uh, I pointed us in the right direction, and we made our way to the trailhead. However, because fog is so disorienting, we were off trail. So this makes it really interesting because there's tons of crevasses and pretty much like unexplored um, topography here. So we had to go super, super slow. And he always wanted me to step exactly where he stepped just in case, you know, the ground gave way <laughs> into a crevasse or something. Uh, so we got to see all this extra cool stuff. Um, there's some glacier runoff uh, flow. The afternoon snow melt gets really intense, so it becomes a little more sketchy. Look at this crevasse that we found. Looking down in there, it's, uh, there's a waterfall into the crevasse there. Uh, absolutely stunning. So anyway, we found our way back to the, scr the scree, and uh, we have to make our way to the little trail up here. Again, I knew exactly the direction we were supposed to go. I've ridden horses in a lot of fog, so uh, it was not a big deal, but uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great part of the adventure and makes a great story. So here we are making that 500 foot climb up this debris field again. Uh, Willie the Everest guy said this is like climbing in a bowling alley because there's not much of a trail and if you dislodge rocks, bad things. Uh, all right, and here is more of that scree scramble that we did, about 500 foot climb, and then we finally get to the top to where the trail is. So out of all of that uh, loose, crumbly footing, and then we're on the ridge, and now it's a 500 foot drop down there, and we did this in the dark this morning about uh, between 2 and 3 a.m., so never got to see it, and then even now, it's completely fogged in, so I still can't really see all the way down, but uh, it's about 500 feet down there. And we're on this narrow trail, which is really cool. And uh, we're starting to see green. We're starting to see green. And uh, we descend down and starting to see more and more signs of the forest beginning, which is a really cool thing. I don't think I've ever really seen that before. You know, not on an airplane where the, the snow and mountains end and the forest begins. It's a very cool experience to drop down into the forest. Uh, as someone who lives at sea level and climbs up to the forest regularly. There's a cute little pond there. Um, there's some beautiful flowers too. So it's a really cool area of elevation. And finally make it to camp. From camp to camp, this was a 13 and a half hour day. Uh, 14 hours for the other half of the team. And the boots are off. And now it's time for dinner. So excited and hot tea. It's really nice getting ready for bed here get the water set for tomorrow got my snacks ready for tomorrow and uh, packed up the next morning and I'm out day four dawn's a little chilly and we begin our hike nice and early and start heading on down you have to tackle the ladder again we go up it uh, when you get to the top again you have to like grab a rope and like walk across the actual landslide which is really fun and here I kind of felt like a weird four-legged animal because <laughs> I don't really use trekking poles but uh, this is uh, a lot of downhill and trekking poles are good uh, Willie found a very old horseshoe that was pretty neat uh, taking a break right here and um, starting to get a little rib spot on one bottom of one foot so I added some mole skin there Took a little break here. Beautiful. Amen. 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 Yeah, the whole rainforest is just honestly one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Really enjoyed this. I'm doing really great. Um, there was never a point where I was out of breath or struggled or felt like I was going to give up, and, uh, oh, here's cute little bunny rabbit. 
uh, I kind of ended up filming this rabbit for a while and not really trying to walk by it without disturbing it. It was just so damn cute. But uh, overall, I think my training was really good. Handled it well. I see, I can see I'm super stoked. And I'm back to my special little oasis. <laughs> and today it's all bright and sunny and pretty. And the water just looks amazing. And I'm so excited to go skinny dipping again and take a bath. Cause it's been a couple days at this point. So what a beautiful place to kind of uh, bathe. I got my sleeping pad here so I can do some sunbathing too. And I've got my lunch. And uh, the water is just looking so gorgeous. And just have a really, just a beautiful cleansing ritual after all that crazy hiking and, and climbing and mountaineering. So stoked. I'm back at camp. I didn't bring any music. My phone was off other than filming. I would literally just turn it off when I literally wasn't filming and I'd power it up to, to take little film clips and then turn it right back off again. Um, Got to get the water set. We're back to filtering water down here and getting all set for tomorrow, which is great. And then it's time for dinner. Uh, this was actually the best, <laughs> the best dinner of them all, the mac and cheese. I saved it to the very end. It had the least amount of calories and protein. And then a ranger comes up and uh, checks for a permit. See, it's right there next to Adam's foot. And, uh, oh, this is how I brush my teeth. I got my little floss pick and then these chewable toothpaste uh, dehydrated tablet things. So you just chew them up and brush your teeth. And uh, that way you don't have to carry the weight of toothpaste. So that's pretty neat. Catching the, some sunset there, drying out my mountaineering boots because I got a bunch of snow in them yesterday. Sending out my spot GPS signal to Sadie and everyone else to let them know that I made it to our last camp. And uh, just enjoying the view before going to bed on our last night on the trail. All right, day five, coffee time. Early morning. It's going to be about a 10 mile uh, hike out of here. But first, I got to go hike to that outhouse again. I'm trying to avoid using a bag. <laughs> so I'm going to go out of my way to go find this outhouse. Uh, the one up near the guard station. And there it is. Like a beautiful, very stinky fairy house. Out in the middle of the woods. Yay! <laughs> All right. Get packed up. I'm ready to go. Uh, Willie or Adam, no, Adam found uh, this neat little piece of bone. And i um, thrilled to be hiking in my hiking sandals again. Love these. They're Keens. I'm a big fan of Keens. And uh, doing another one of our log crossings. We have about five or six uh, log or log jam crossings on that first day. And uh, we're doing them all over again, but in reverse. So I'm pretty happy. I'm enjoying the beauty of the Ho Rainforest. And uh, just marveling at all of the beauty. Everyone else is really like eager to get out of there. We have 10 miles to cover to get out of the forest, but I'm taking the time to just enjoy a lot of this old growth. And uh, yeah, they're getting a little impatient with me, so they're eager to escape. And then soon enough, there is the parking lot. It just comes out of nowhere. And, uh, oh, we did see a big herd of elk. There's a picture. I was unable to get my uh, camera out in time, but there was an, uh, must have been like 13 of them. And then Sadie picks me up, and then we have all the food, and she brought me snacks. And, uh, yeah, she knows me well. I was joking about wishing I had gummies, and she pulled all that out of her purse, and <laughs> she brought me gummies. She does know me well. Love her. And a uh, shower, and then the time for a massage, and uh, another dinner, because I'm really hungry. And uh, this, I asked for hot tea and they didn't have any, but like the restaurant went and specifically boiled water so I could have some hot tea, which is really kind of them. And I got my salmon teriyaki and checking out my bruises. And um, I did get a little blister on my foot there, but it, you know, was healed up in like a day. So I wrapped it up and uh, got my Vespa heading back home. And that was my adventure.